Hello, my name is James Stewart and I work at the University of Edinburgh in Science, Technology and Innovation Studies. And we study how science and technology is created, uh, governed and the impact it has in the world. In this lecture I'm going to be talking about the concept of evidence and how evidence is created and used from data and how evidence is used as part of trying to uh, put forward or support an argument for a particular way of doing things, a new sort of project uh, and it's very common in policy, in business, in medicine and in everyday life. So in this video I'm going to introduce the concept of evidence um, which you will use in your work in turning data into something that has impact in the real world. So we're going to cover what is evidence, we're going to introduce the idea of evidence practices and processes, um, particularly the process of legitimization of evidence, um, mention some of the challenges of producing evidence and the way that evidence processes can go wrong. So this is what you would uh, often see as is kind of clear evidence that somebody has done something wrong. You find the handprint and you find the, the, the culprit's hand covered in blood. Maybe something a bit, little bit more sophisticated. A fingerprint has for, for 100 years was accepted in court as evidence uh, that linked someone to the scene of the crime. Here's another bit of evidence has a lot of impact uh, these days. This is a graph of all sorts of scientific measurements um, from ice cores and other sources to supposedly demonstrate the human created climate change. And this has had a big impact in the climate negotiations and in public understanding of, of climate change. Here in the commercial domain, you often see adverts like this, 3000 women in a study proved that this product reduced the, the um, uh, signs of aging, not actually, the <laughs> but there actually is aging. This sort of use of evidence is, is used to, as one of the ways of communicating the brand and the value of the product. So we're going to, we're going to look, kind of look around the world that produces these sorts of um, evidential resources uh, to help think people do things. So if you look at the, def the definition from the Oxford English Dictionary, they define evidence as the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is valid or true. And more particularly, information drawn from personal testimony, a document or a material object used to establish facts in a legal investigation or admissible as testimony in a law court. So here we have a kind of a general definition that talks about facts and trying to decide whether something, a, a belief or proposition is true. And the description of particular process in, uh, in within justice. So let's explore this a bit further. So we can think of evidence as a verb to make evident. Um, so what this this when you put make create evidence and use evidence you're you're trying to make evident uh, a particular proposition you're tr that you're trying to demonstrate is true so that it's not questionable it's obvious and incontestable and we, we you know all the ideas we have of of uh, kind of the courtroom lawyer in the Hollywood movies is about making something absolutely uh, clear and you, you 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 don't doubt the the story and the evidence that's been produced the same way with in in the climate change debate at what point is the evidence irrefutable and it's absolutely clear that something has happened so how do we make something evident <clears throat> Well, kind of very, very basically, we say is to demonstrate facts, and to demonstrate is very important because it's a process. Demonstrate is an action. You're you're doing something um, that produces 
what we agree is uh, something real in the world. Now you can do that by producing a picture or visualization. You produce a photograph of somebody uh, kind of on a video stealing or stealing something from a shop, for example. Um, but you may also produce a graph based from some sort of scientific uh, data collection. Um, and this is often used to demonstrate a trend or comparison. <clears throat> so visualization is a, is a very powerful way we have of demonstrating a fact. Now we often want to link together a number of different facts as it were to create a logical and compelling narrative and the use of logic um, to link together various kind of stages of a story uh, to, t to create a chain of hypotheses is a very uh, so this, this is how kind of a case is put together and it often involves the elimination of alternative explanations what we call the counterfactual um, so we say this happened because we, we can prove that XYZ other things did not happen um, we can also use kind of a motive uh, approach to making something evident so when we get a witness testimony who's when they tell the story um, of something they experienced, their emotional engagement kind of tells us that it's true. Um, and it, it's, it's the kind of the seeing of the emotion and the hearing of it uh, is a very kind of powerful way of demonstrating uh, veracity. <clears throat> we can also ground uh, the evidence in scientific theory and hypotheses so we say um you know this is according to newtonian physics uh we can prove precisely that the bullet was fired from over the other side of the road and not from somewhere else <clears throat> and this is often associated with some sort of statistical test that demonstrates the the probability that something is beyond doubt um, and we have a whole uh, set of, of tools that enables to say how confident we are with a particular piece of, of evidence. And finally, we legitimize, uh, we make something evident by, by asking qualified or influential or persuasive people and organizations to legitimize uh, our version or our story um, and our facts. So let's move on from kind of how do we make something evidence evident to look at this process of, of evidence and we can identify two different aspects one is the evidence itself the facts that might be gathered and the others are the processes that are used to create present and argue that that those facts are legitimate and this we call the evidence practice so when we look in the real world how do we see evidence being used um, as the definition of the dictionary definition said, it's a resource for decision making. Um, in justice, in law, in everyday life, deciding whether which sort of coach you're gonna take out for the day, uh, in making design decisions, business decisions, policy. And you can either have it, say, the evidence that's brought to the court and it's used at one point, or you can have it as evidence that's used for making decisions day in, day out, in which you need some sort of uh, mechanism to keep delivering the evidence at a uh, continual stream. Now we use, if we have a proposition, we try and decide whether it's true, we, we look for different sorts of evidence to reduce our uncertainty in the decision making. So is it going to rain today? Well, I look at a couple of weather forecasts and so all these ones are normally a bit better. Mm, okay, let, let's, let's, uh, I reduce the uncertainty enough so I don't have to take a thick coat today. Well, I'm not really sure, therefore, I'll, I'll take decisions to take a thick coat. As well as kind of it, it reducing uncertainty, it also in the, in the kind of broader domain of, of, of politics or, or um, marketing and advertising, it's sort of kind of shape opinion. Um, what, what do you think about something? It's not for, not for actually an actionable decision at a single point of time, but it's changing people's attitudes um, that may add up to types of particular actions sometime in the future. 
within decision making processes we also use evidence to legitimize a decision or lack of decision so the uk government has been putting off um, building a third runway at Heathrow Airport for 45 years and they keep calling independent commissions to collect evidence um, and this legitimizes them not actually making a decision which is too politically difficult uh, or otherwise you can you can call a scientist and the scientist said we should do this therefore we did it and it's not my fault it's their fault <clears throat> so they this very political use of evidence and and generally, when, when we have any sort of contested issue in the political domain uh, or, or in, in, any, in any domain of life, we will call on evidence in order to uh, manage that constated, const, uh, that constated process, um, how to try and bring people together around referring to kind of external evidence. So these are some of the ways that, that you'll find evidence being used um, and if you produce evidence, then you've got to think about how, the, how these, these processes work. Now, it's important to, to realize that you can't just produce kind of universal knowledge in, in the real world. Okay, that is very useful, but actually, for most of the time, we have to produce evidence that is provided at the right time, in the right place, and in the form that can be used by those making decisions with appropriate legitimating support. Therefore, for example, in the policy making process, you have to have bring the evidence before the correct committee at the timetable they're going to make it. In, in a legal uh, format, you have to bring your evidence to the trial. It's no good finding it too late or presenting in a form that is not going to be convincing to the jury, for example. Um, <clears throat> so this, the timeliness and the place of it in the form are really important. You know, so we so we're talking about all the all these uh, um, interesting evidence processes and practices, but they can go wrong in so many different ways, and we, and we're reduced just to our beliefs and power politics. One of the first problems with with the production of evidence it is expensive, and if something's expensive, then there's always a limited resources, and um, when there's limited resources, then you owe, you know we have to decide what is good enough evidence for answering the question how much are we willing to spend in order to, and how much time we're willing to give in order to gather new evidence to inform our decision making process and you may say well we haven't got much money well let's really have to make do with extrapolating from other experiences um you know best guesses really kind of very weak forms of, of evidence production um, now, evidence is also kind of a form of knowledge, and every form of knowledge uh, can be um, undermined and questioned. Uh, so, the, the, the kind of the freight, the f kind of fundamental kind of philosophical level, uh, knowledge is is can be challenged. And so, when we when we we may think we have a good secure case, there's always uh, some way that we can undermine that knowledge. Um, and the problem, you may have lots of money to collect evidence, you may not have the expertise, you may not have enough experts or knowledge to be able to do, to be able to do it. Um, there aren't enough uh, data scientists in the world these days, there, there weren't enough climate scientists in order to answer these, these questions. Um, and finally you have this, the, the, the process of legitimization and the agents who legitimize things can fail or they can lose power so you can you can discredit the ex expert you can discredit the method same was the, the the kind of fin fingerprint method was discredited um, over a period of 20 or 30 years so the, these are kind of ways that are kind of failure and then when you do even if you do have good evidence you can have it misused you can evidence can be, can, can be created and then not examined, it can be suppressed, and, and these are really common ways of, of seeing problems with evidence. So finally, um, there's five lessons we, we can draw. First, when you produce evidence, make sure it suits the audience. Don't present something, you know, extremely complicated graph that uh, nobody can understand unless they've got a PhD in the topic. You have to 
choose the appropriate evidence practices to legitimize your proposition. So is it important to have an expert? Um, is it important to have first-hand witness uh, testimony? That you have, to, you have to think about where you're taking your evidence and, and what you need to make it legitimate. You have to make sure you present your evidence at the right place in the right time. And because you will have had to spend a limited amount of time and resources on, on creating your evidence, it's always going to be limited and therefore it's going to have weaknesses. And then you have to be prepared to be challenged on those weaknesses and defend them. Thank you very much.